is two and a half pounds. I've designed yet another cycloidal drive, which if you're unfamiliar is a compact gearbox design. Mechanically, it's actually not that complicated. In fact, it's relatively simple compared to other ones that I've designed in the past. But it is unique in a few key areas that make it particularly interesting. As always, it was designed in Fusion 360, so I could take you through all the nuances in the CAD model itself, or I could just make it and show it to you in real life. So why don't I do that? One of the main things that made this project unique from much of the other stuff I've done before is that it was designed specifically to be 3D printed. Many of my other projects require CNC aluminum or acrylic or something like that, which can often make them more robust, more professional looking, but also more difficult to produce and less accessible. This one instead only requires a handful of 3D printed pieces and a little bit of hardware. That's it. I guess there was one piece that wasn't 3D printed. To make the internal pins of the mechanism, I used this 5x3mm stainless steel tube. So I now have all my parts, but before I start assembling my actuator, I need a way to properly drive my stepper motor. I recently got some L298N modules. These are double full H-bridge ICs, which means that they're great for driving bipolar stepper motors. I wrote some Arduino code utilizing one of these modules. It takes an input from a potentiometer and then rotates a stepper motor as if it were kind of like a servo. It maps each potentiometer value to a motor position and moves the motor accordingly. So I can turn my potentiometer here and that corresponds to a movement in the stepper motor. And that noise you hear is just the PWM frequency for the stall torque. So now that I've got the motor moving, I guess it's time that I actually assemble this actuator. This design only uses four screws and they all go in at the end, so assembly could be a little bit interesting. So this piece goes on top of here, then I'll need to put my cycloidal gears onto my eccentric shaft. I'm gonna press one of these big bearings over my base piece here. Now I've gotta get my eccentric shaft over here. It, oh, there it goes. I have these four stainless steel tubes that the screws will pass through. These go inside these holes and I need to line up with some indents that are in the base piece. What makes this actuator unique from a normal cycloidal drive is that it's essentially inside out. Usually the cycloidal gear rotates and that rotation is transmitted to the output. But in this case, these four pins here, they're going right through the gear and they're going to be held rigidly. That means that the gears will not be allowed to rotate, they'll only be allowed to wobble around. And that wobbling motion is going to transmit the rotation to this. This is the output ring. You can see the corresponding grooves on the inside there. So this is gonna go around the cycloidal gears and the bottom of here is going to fit onto this bearing. Oh yeah. Now that that's in place, I can put on my second bearing. Then before I put on my top piece, I have another bearing, which is gonna go on the top here. That'll make it so that when I put on this final piece, it'll clamp down the shaft so it keeps it concentric. So these four screws here go through the entire mechanism. When I tighten them up, it should clamp the whole thing together. I can hear the whole thing creaking as I tighten it down. I think that's it all snapping together. There we go. This thing is looking really cool. It all went together without too much difficulty. I guess I should see if it actually turns. Yeah, I'd say it turns. One of the other aspects of this design that sets it apart from some of the things I've designed in the past is that it's actually meant to be attached to stuff. In this case, this 30 millimeter aluminum box tube. Often when I design things, there's mounting holes, but I don't really consider how it would be incorporated into a larger system. This thing instead is designed to, to work for something like a modular robotic arm. It looks a lot more like a real thing with these box tubes on it. Got it clamped to my bench here so we can move it around a little bit. Um, to my pleasant surprise, this thing is actually back drivable. I didn't expect it to be at all, but look at it. You can back drive it. I've got my potentiometer at the ready, so I guess I should go ahead and turn it on. Okay.
Yeah, 180 degrees right there. I'd say it works. <laughs> I don't have it going super fast, but that's still pretty fun. You can also see there's a lot of wiggling at the end of here. There's a ton of play in this. My 3D prints here are definitely not precise, but they do work. It's drawing way more current than it should. I don't think I'm breaking anything though. Anyways, let's test the stall torque of this actuator. I'm gonna bring it up to 90 degrees. I'm gonna stick a drill bit in this hole here, just as a stop. This is two and a half pounds. Under one amp, okay. How about five pounds? I don't think I can do this. It's making a bad noise, but it's definitely doing it. So apparently it can do five pounds for a stall torque. Um, this is about a foot, so it might be five foot pounds. Uh, I'll do the math and I'll put the numbers on the screen here. And everyone always gets mad at me for using imperial units for torque, so I'll make sure to include the, the metric ones too. This torque is only applicable to a stall. If I try and move it under this weight, it'll collapse. So here's my two and a half pounds. And then if I try and move it, Oh, that was horrible. Yeah, it doesn't like that. I don't have any precise weight, so I can't really measure anything over five pounds because I don't think it's gonna be able to hold seven and a half. It was really struggling at five. But passing five foot pounds of torque is still pretty good for something like this. So in the end, I am pretty happy with this actuator. I'm not ecstatic, but I am happy. The whole thing is 3D printed. It only requires a handful of parts and just four screws to put it together. My cycloidal drives are rarely back drivable, so I had low hopes for this one, but it certainly is, which is a very pleasant surprise. But what I think I really like about this design is that it looks the part. It doesn't look like a motor with something strapped onto it. It looks like a proper robotic actuator, more so than anything I've designed before. And that of course is due to just the attachment of these 30 millimeter box tubes. I can definitely see having this, another actuator on the bottom, another one on top, and pretty easily being able to make a modular robotic arm out of it. And being just how fun this was to design and build, I'm seriously considering uh, refining this design, making a few more, and building that robotic arm. It wouldn't be anything super strong or precise, just something to mess around with. I think it could be a lot of fun. Let me know if you'd be interested in something like that, and I might give it a shot. But of course this was not a perfect design, it has a handful of issues. The primary issue I'm seeing right now is the amount of play. I'm thinking there might be up to somewhere around 5 degrees of play, which is not amazing. I'm thinking there might be an issue with my 3D printer. It kind of seems like the tolerances are different in the X and Y axes, which results in circles that aren't quite circles but are a little more oval. Most of these round parts did seem like they were a little bit squished in in one dimension. That printer is certainly pretty well, but I think it might have run its course by now. So I really enjoyed making this and testing it out. I hope you enjoyed watching me do so. If you did enjoy seeing this and would like to see more of my stuff, subscribe, you know what to do, do all the things. If you'd like to directly support me and get access to some of the files that I use in my projects, you can do so via Patreon. There will be a link for that in the description. But that's all I have for you today, so I'll see you later. Bye.